Hello, hello, and welcome to this week's episode um, of Experience Wildlife's Quick Tips. This week, we're just going to talk a little bit about how to edit your photos to make them really pop. So I use Lightroom, and I'm going to show you a few of the things that I do in Lightroom that will make your images look better, a little more enticing, and keep them looking also the way that you saw them in the field. So not manipulating, not changing, but just making your images go from good to wow. So check out this video. Hi everyone. Uh, this week we're gonna talk a little bit about editing. I'm gonna give you a few tips on how to make your images pop. Now, I want to preface with the fact that you have to take a good picture in camera. You can't take a really bad picture and make it amazing picture in post-processing. It all begins in the camera. However, you can take a really good picture that you, you have taken in the field and really make it pop with just a few little tweaks in Lightroom. So I was in Florida last week photographing a family of sandhill cranes. And I took about 12,000 pictures of them. It was quite impressive over the three days I was there. Um, so I'm going to show you just a little bit of my catalog. You can see this is tons and tons of pictures. Um, I'm using a high frame rate. So lots of different frames per second, giving me variety. And I don't uh, suggest the spray and pray, but I do suggest getting different angles, different eye movements. You know, birds tend to blink. So you want to make sure that you've got the eyes open and that you've got the beak in the right position. You've got the head tilt in the right position. So we're taking lots of different frames. And in Lightroom, we are going to select one. And what I don't like about this particular one is this one leaf coming over the beak. So we might look at a different angle and see if we can find something a little more appealing. So first off, we're going to pick the right frame. I tend to like the way when birds are moving their head so that they are not directly at the camera. So let's go with something more like, how about this one? There we go. Nothing is obstructing the beak or the face of the eye. We've got a nice soft background here. And you can see in my settings that um, I took it at um, an F 9.0. I wanted to make sure I got everything sharp. And I had a two thousandth of a second. So I wanted everything to be um, really nice and sharp as the bird was moving around. All right. So a few things to note that I took in the camera. We've got the light shining on the bird. So we've got front lighting. We've got this highlight in the eye. So did all the things right in camera. Okay. So a few things we're going to do to just make this pop. First off, we're going to look at the color profile okay so you can change the color profile here and the way that we change it is going to dramatically shift the way it looks landscape's going to be a little more rich same with vivid standards not going to be quite so oversaturated you can even go into black and white monochrome you can do some crazy things here give it a little more of a retro look some very dreamy kind of pictures, some extremely oversaturated. You can use toy or some of these artistic settings. You can really change a lot using these color profiles. And I do like the modern settings. Those ones are pretty nice. Modern 4 is pretty good. But... I actually really like the original color profiles. So something like standard um, is usually what I end up using. Every now and again with a really pretty colored bird like a roseate spoonbill, I might use vivid just so that it's popping out those pink colors. But you can see when you're using vivid here, 
the the green is really popping the red is really popping and well i kind of like it so you'll have to tell me in the comments what you like but we're going to go with standard okay so this is pretty similar to what the color profile was in your camera all right something else that i'm looking at is temperature now the color profile that was really kind of messing with the temperature a little but you can make it a little cooler or a little warmer I tend to like it a little bit cooler and I'm looking at my exposure. So I'm trying to get this right in camera. So I'm not going to tweak it very much, but I might be able to tweak it just a little, bringing down some highlights. Sometimes the whites get a little bit too blown out. So just bring down the highlights, pulling out some shadows perhaps. And looking at your blacks and your whites. So we're talking very, very subtle tweaks. Contrast, I very rarely change. If you do that, you might get a little bit more saturation, perhaps in the background there. And then I'm looking at the, um, what's called region. All right. So this is going to be adding your highlights, your lights and your darks. I like to bring up my lights, bring down my darks. Rich in my shadows. Okay. I'm skipping things like color mixer, color grading. And then I do like to denoise a little. You can use the denoise function right here, but um, I tend to see that it takes a long time. So what I like to do is just use a little denoise. It takes out some of the denoise. You can see that here. So I'll do no noise. You can see right here just a little bit. And if I slide it, it's going to denoise. Now, when you're doing that, it's denoising everything. And what, so what I do is I go into masking. And what masking has is subject, sky, and background. So what I can do is have it select the subject. It's pretty good at knowing what it is I'm looking for. And you can see here, I want to select the head. And I don't want to select the body. I purposely threw it out of... Um, of sharpness here. So I want to just keep that blurred of the body, but just sharpen the whole head. And I like to use texture. So just sharpening that there. I don't like clarity. It really changes the way it looks. I'll show you, see how that brings out the, the blacks. So we're going to leave clarity alone, looking at a zero, and just bring up the texture a little bit. So you can see here, that's really going to sharpen everything up. It's going to denoise the background here. You can mess with the background a little bit in that selective tool, making the background just a little less sharp. And then they did add a new function here. I do find that in a situation like this, it's a little unnecessary, but you can apply um, a lens blur to the background. So it's going to blur out the background. In this case, it's not really necessary. The background is already out of focus. I just do a few little tweaks and I can show you from the beginning to the end.